Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV Prime at 9 now, news and details. The Supreme Court has dismissed a petition filed by the deceased Congress leader Shan Jaffrey's widow Zakia Jaffrey that questioned the clean sheet by the special investigation team to Prime Minister Narendra Modi and 63 others for the alleged role in the violence. Ishan Jaffrey was killed during the violence at Gulbark Society in Ahmedabad on February 28, 2002. The court had reserved its order on a petition filed by Zakia Jaffrey against the Gujarat High Court's order rejecting her plea against the SIT decision, giving a clean shit to PM Narendra Modi, who was the then Gujarat Chief Minister in 2002, and 63 others in December last year. Senior advocate Mukul Rohatki, who appeared for the SIT, told the bench that the Supreme Court should endorse the trial court and the Gujarat High Court's decision on Jaffrey's plea, otherwise it would result in an endless exercise that could go on because of some motives of social activist Tista Settlewad, who's petitioner number two in the petition. Kapil Sibyl, who appeared for Zakia Jaffrey, told the top court that the SIT did not conduct an investigation but did a collaborative exercise and its probe was fraught with omissions to protect conspirators. The Supreme Court, however, said that Jaffrey's petition was a motivated and prompted by direction from some others. In the name of a plea running into 514 pages, the appellant was also indirectly questioning the decisions rendered by the courts in other cases including sub matters, for reasons best known to her. She was obviously doing so under dictation by someone. In fact, the sizable content of the protest petition was based on the affidavits filed by those persons and was found to be replete with falsehoods. The SIT had formed its opinion after considering all the materials collated during the investigation. The question of further investigation would have arisen only on the availability of new material information in connection with the allegation of a larger conspiracy at the highest level, which is not forthcoming in this case. Hence, the final report as submitted by the SIT ought to be accepted as it is without doing anything more, the Supreme Court said. In a massive development, Pakistan has arrested Sajid Mir, Pakistan-based top Lashkar E. Daiba commander, who was one of the main planners of the 2611 Mumbai terror attack, years after denying his presence and even stating that he was dead. Sajid Mir is wanted for his alleged involvement in the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks and he is on the FBI's most wanted list and carries a 5 million reward. On 26 November 2008, 10 LET terrorists carried out a series of coordinated attacks in Mumbai, killing approximately 170 people, including six Americans. When Sajid Mir's name first cropped up in relation to the attacks, Pakistan said nobody by the description existed. This despite the fact that Mir had been convicted in absentia by French court. When international pressure intensified, particularly by the G7's anti-money laundering organization, FATF, Pakistan declared Sajid Mir had died. The action is reportedly taken by Pakistan to extricate itself from the terror financing watch list of the Financial Action Task Force. Another earthquake hit Afghanistan where at least 11 people were injured and 5 were reported dead. Second earthquake hit eastern Afghanistan on Friday also shook at the same area where a powerful jolt killed over 1,150 earlier this week. State media informed that this quake, however, was not as powerful as the earlier one. Paktika's Gayan district is already reeling from Wednesday's magnitude 6 quake that killed 1,150 people and injured scores more. The race for Raisina Hill is frozen. India candidate Tropati Mumu submitted her nomination for the presidential election on Friday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi was the main proposer for the nomination of Tropati Mumu. Two ministers of state governments ruled by PJP and its allies, including Yogi Adityanath, were also present on Friday. If Tropati Mumu is elected as Ramnath Kovin's successor, she will be the second woman president of the country after Pratibha Patel. Not only that, she will be the first indigenous president of the country.
In an attempt to convince the Shiv Sena rebel, MLAs and leader Agnath Shinde amid the Maharashtra crisis, Satara Shiv Sena Deputy District Chief Sanjay Bosali urged the MLAs to return back to Madoshi on June 24 in Guwahati. The Shiv Sena leader travelled from Maharashtra to Assam with banners to urge the leaders to return back. भाई जो बोल रहे हैं वो दिखावा है ये शिवसेना की आइडियोलॉजी नहीं है बीजेपी के साथ जाना ये शिवसेना का आइडियोलॉजी नहीं है शिवसेना ने भाई को बहुत दिया है एकनाथ शिंदे और जितने भी एमएलए यहाँ रुके उनके लिए शिवसेना ने रक्त हटाया है शिवसैनिकों ने अपनी शक्ति से अपने कर्म से उनको चुनाव के चुनाव में जिता लाया है और ये गलत कर रहे है शिवसैनिका शिवसैनिकों को जुटला रहे है शिवसैनिकों को फेंक रहे है इसलिए मैं कह रहा हूं आप अभी भी वापस आओ मातोश्री चलो और शिवसेना प्रमुख का आदर रखो Later in the day, police detained Satara Shiv Sena Deputy District Chief Sanjay Bosali as the leader camped outside the hotel where the Shiv Sena rebels, MLAs and leaders Ignat Shinde are staying. The Shiv Sena leader travelled from Maharashtra to Assam with banners to urge the leaders to return to Madoshi amid the Maharashtra crisis. आप तो जानते हैं जो ये किडना सेंसिटिव एरिया है आप लोग दूर दूर से आए हैं सारा इंडिया से आया है क्यों आया है तो ये एरिया तो काफ़ी सेंसिटिव है ना आप लोग का सिक्योरिटी है लोगों का सिक्योरिटी है सब लोग के लिए पुलिस ये फोर्स इधर में दिया गया है तो दैट इज वाई हम लोग कोई आदमी लोग कोई थोड़ा सा इधर उधर जो कार्रवाई होता है देखते हैं सस्पेक्ट होता है इसीलिए उसको हम लोग अरे डिटेन किया है कौन अरेस्ट किया है अरे भाई थाना में लेके जाके उनको पूछना पड़ेगा रे भाई आप कहाँ से आए हैं क्यों आया है Amid the continuing political crisis in Maharashtra due to revolt in the Shiv Sena, NCP Chief Sharad Pawar, Deputy CM Ajit Pawar, arrived at Madoshri, the residence of the Chief Minister Udav Thackeray in Mumbai. The leaders were accompanied by the State Minister Jayant Patel and NCP leader Praful Patel. The leaders are expected to discuss ways to prevent fall of the MVA government, which also includes the Congress. Ajit Pawar said earlier in the day that the NCP stands with the Chief Minister and will try to keep the government stable. The crisis continued to plague Shiv Sena with rebel leader Eknath Shinde claiming support of 38 party MLAs. Thackeray had vacated the official residence of the CM on Wednesday night and moved to his family residence, Madoshi, along with his family. With an aim to increase agricultural productivity by promoting farm mechanization, the Agriculture Farm Missionaries for Kharif 2022 was launched today under the Submission on Agricultural Mechanization at Central Store, Dimapur. The launching was graced by Additional Director of Agriculture C. Peter Yanthan on behalf of Minister for Agriculture and Cooperation G. Kaito Aie. Speaking at the event, Yanthan said that the farm missionaries will benefit the farmers immensely while saving their time and increasing their agricultural productivity. 44 machineries including power tillers, rotary tillers, brush cutters, rice meal and tractors were distributed to farmers today and were informed that more machineries will be distributed in coming days. This launching day, this is the power machineries all of numbers all of distribute. Power tiller 15 days, rotary tiller is mini tiller, 10 Brush cutter itu 12 dish, rice mill bi pasta dish, aru tractor duita dish, launching la nam. Aru this monsoon season te moi kan prepare kura tu farmers kan ke dibole thay kya tu. Power tiller 100 numbers dibole ready kuri na se. Aru itu mini power tiller itu 15 power tiller power tiller na hoy na itu tractors tractors down rola itu 15 arrange kuri na se. Our brush cutter, it will be 400 ready to be Rice meal, it will be 100 ready to be done. Our mini power tiller, it will be rotary tiller. 
itu 200 uh, to arrange green asset. Agorbi olo base aru water pump 300 numbers this night to sell monsoon day distribute koru base. Last year te itu COVID readiness kan 100 800 plus kan ge meji pima para itu field officers deputy director rank ekta para trainees di she aru itu kiman jon itu tu aku koru na pari gina se itu kan missionaries alag alag brush cutter power tiller no lebi kini kan missionary kan itu repair kore itu one month opporte takan training logi ne itu logi ne takan itu itia konba mano tu missionary bi loi loi she konba mano tu itia loi ne kambi kuri bolle suru hi jaise itu covid 19 te effect kora aru drought effect kora kan tu itia takan itua alternative itu kan train kora tu itu bar season te takan kam kuri ne suru hi jaise beneficiaries kan biro dimapur la class na sob nagaland district lagas na aro beneficiaries kan ye kinega select kuri na itu missions kan tu dia se itu tu khali particular itu district karne no hoy dimapur karne no hoy moi meeting te kon isna dangor tractors kan tu itu foothills plain areas kan karne to lai holi bi mission kan tu sob hol nagaland itu bakuri na ta ki dio sdo kan ke bakure beneficiaries kan kon ba adar tu Dimapur lah tak ke? Hulu bi asal manusia tu jaga ni supposing example kezakan no manusia tak isye, kikruman manusia tak isye. Tuh itu kan nisna so all over itu farmers kan ke cover kuri ni, district kan so nagalente tak ke kan cover kuri asite. Kuhan nisna itu mesin kan tu mungkin babna nisna thousands thousands lakhs tu itu naik itu tu in term of three figures tu ahi tak ke? Bisi waktu. Itu kan? Mungkin kan bi bamna ase farmers kan tu bisi ase nagalan tu itu agricultural state bi ekta ase bisi manu tu agriculture kore itya tu importance tu jangan ingine manu ahiine mangiya tu ekdom bisi hujaiche. Kalau bi mungkin kan bi itu select kru bolle allah dikdar hujine thake. To bisi waktu dia atau SDO kan par recommend kuri na ha kan. Nolib bi itu genuine farmers kan paria tak itu kan ke chance digi na ahi ase. Eki barde sub farmers tu accommodate kuru na pari gina se. Iti atak dia tu bit by bit aru tu part part kuru gina mwikhan installment wise para distribute kuru gina jaya se de. Well, my name is Muzdeng. I am from Buga District. And regarding this tractor, I'll take to Uka. It's a long journey for me. That's why I'm worrying now. Anyway, I give thanks to the department for providing this uh, huge tractor for free of cost. I mean, the tractor bring in free of cost, bring in. I mean, busy, busy, busy. So, the other side, can give me. I mean, farmers friend, come here, come on, talk to. Come to, come to, give me. So, I mean, ban is not about that. So, the department has always helping in the village. So, come to, help us, give me. Then, we buy it. So, go to the village. The enforcement director has asked Congress President Sonia Gandhi to record her statement with the agency sometime in late July after it accepted her plea to postpone her deposition in a money laundering case linked to the National Herald newspaper. She was issued a second summon for June 23rd by the agency, but a 75-year-old Congress leader could not keep the date as she has been strictly advised to rest at home following her hospitalization on account of COVID and lung infection. Sources said that federal agency has postponed her questioning in the case for about four weeks and she has now been asked to depose sometime in the last week of July. Gandhi was first issued the notice for an appearance on June 8, but after she reported positive for COVID-19, the summons for June 23rd was issued. The Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority has issued damage report in different districts due to incessant rains across the state. DDMA Perun reported that there has been damages within Tenning subdivision and Atibang subdivision. Road blockades along Kohima, Lake Hare Road and NEC Road were reported due to landslide. 
The authority said that machinery available in the subdivision were pressed into action for immediate road clearance to facilitate the movement of people and essential goods. However, major relief intervention remains to be deployed in respect of destruction to public infrastructure and public property, damage to private residents and hanging bridges which serve as a lifeline to many villages. Unless there is immediate intervention, further damages are likely to worsen the existing situation, especially in respect of community assets. Reports have also been received from Noklak district that due to the recent thunderstorms and incessant rain, major landslides have been reported and Pangyang sector, high school sector, Tanlem sector, Nokian B village, Nokian village, Dem sector and Kaungwao sector. Evacuation of affected families is being carried out by the District Disaster Management Authority. On the night of 21st June 2022, heavy rainfalls caused landslide at Noku Approach Road, blocking the route to more than 20 villages. As the rain continues incessantly in the district, the common people have been put in grave danger. At present, the District Disaster Management Authority, Noklak, is carrying out road clearance operations in the affected areas. DDMA PEC has also reported major landslide between Komi and Polami Road, Tizami and Mesulumi Meluri, Loza Puho and Lanye Village. The available machinery has been pressed into action for immediate clearance of the road blockades. The DDMA has advised all commuters to travel with caution on these routes as more major landslides are expected with the, the continuous downpour. Meanwhile, in Woka district, commuters travelling towards Chutikong to Toyang Bridge were advised by DDMA Woka to avoid taking the route as landslides in the area have been reported. A recent study of the Lancet that revealed about 42 lakh potential deaths which been prevented by using COVID-19 vaccine has given a big boost to the pro-vax supporters. With at least 5.73 million people being vaccinated every day, the death toll due to the deadly virus is bringing a shade of light across the globe. The study claims that number of deaths that were prevented between December 8 and 2020 and December 8, 2021, which reflects the first year in which the vaccine were distributed. found that the COVID-19 vaccination has reduced death rates all over the world. And even in India, they have estimated at least 42 lakhs death cases to have been prevented because of the COVID-19 vaccination. In the first year of vaccination itself, out of the potential 31.4 million, at least 19.3 million deaths were prevented. And they've also revealed something very amazing. That is, if the health organizations target to vaccinate at least 40% of one country, 40% of one country's population, then the, at least the death rate would have been reduced by 9,99,300. The estimate was made according to the excess mortality in India and the sources was taken from the Economist, uh, which has its sources uh, similar to that of uh, what the WHO has reported. The estimates are based on the estimates of excess mortality in India during the COVID-19 pandemic, which we have sourced from The Economist and are similar to the estimates that the World Health Organization have reported. COVID-19 was declared a pandemic on March 2020 by the World Health Organization. According to the World Health Organization, till June 23rd, there has been a total of 5,391,019,771 confirmed cases of COVID-19. As of 20 June 2022, more than 1 billion vaccine doses have been administered. COVID-19 has infected at least 54.2 crore people and claimed 63.3 lakh views. With COVID-19 being a worldwide issue, World Health Organization announced that immunization reduces the risk of getting a disease by working with our body natural defense to build protection and vaccination is a necessity. In correspondence to the declaration made by the World Health Organization, over 200 world leaders called for all citizens to be vaccinated. World Health Organization data shows that 11,912,594,538 vaccine doses have been administered so far. 
Bharatiya Janata Party led NDS presidential candidate Rao Party Momo has filed her nomination papers today at the Parliament Library building in the national capital. Several chief ministers and deputy CMs of PJP ruled or aligned states were also present during the filing of papers. Momo was accompanied by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and senior leaders of the ruling party, including PJP President JP Nada, Amit Shah, Rajnath Singh, several chief ministers, leaders of supporting parties as she filed her nomination papers for a July 18 presidential election. Deputy Chief Minister of Nagaland and PJP Chief from the state, Yantomo Paton, who was just the Parliament Library building, spoke to Hornbill TV over the phone. Let's have a listen as to what he had to say about Murmur's nomination. We have just uh, filed her nomination. Okay. Yeah, so we're coming out from Parliament. Okay, and so how do you feel that she being a tribal and, you know, we are also indigenous people of Nagaland, so she also being a tribal, would there be, a, an, uh, you know, a very good positive effect for indigenous people of India? Yes, yes, that's what we feel. I think she'll be okay uh, for the entire country and especially for the tribals. Okay, sir. It's very simple. Mm. She was a governor of uh, Tarkan also, no? Yes, sir. Once, yeah. Okay. We are just coming out from uh, Parliament. We went to file the nomination. Even not only BJP, but uh, NTA, no? Yes, sir. Alliance with BJP, we are all happy. All right, sir. Even today, we, I came along with our Chief Minister Ryu. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.